The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, Breakout Investing, with your host, Ken Shreve. Good afternoon, friends from Los Angeles, California. Welcome to another edition of Breakout Investing on TFNN. Ken Shreve with you. Thanks very much for uh, tuning in. I'll be with you for the next uh, 50, 55 minutes or so talking about this uh, market. Seeing a little bit of selling in the market uh, today. Uh, volume for pretty much the session was tracking um, you know, quite a bit lower than what we saw uh, Monday, but then the Fed minutes came out and uh, started to see a little bit of acceleration uh, to the downside, but right now the losses uh, you know, are not uh, are not too bad. We'll see how things shake out by the uh, close. Um, number to use to uh, call if you want to talk to me about this market, just dial 877-927- Six six four eight. My show airs every Tuesday and Thursday, just two days a week on TFNN uh, from 3 to 4 Eastern. Uh, if you want to get the show as a podcast on iTunes, you can do that as well. And don't forget, you can listen to all TFNN programming on your smartphone. Uh, very easy. Just type in tfnn.mobi in your smartphone browser. And you can listen to the stream uh, that way as uh, well. I'll be going over charts on the program. If you want to look at those charts live right along with me, you can do that in Tiger TV. On the homepage of TFNN.com, Channel 1, the show is carried live, and the show is archived on Channel 13. And you can uh, also watch Tiger TV now on your handheld device, your Android device, your iPhone uh, so be sure to uh, check that out as well. I want to start by taking a look at the NASDAQ uh, 100 today. I'll go ahead and uh, update the NASDAQ 100, see where it is uh, trading right now. We see the uh, NASDAQ 100 um, down seven, close to eight points, uh, three-tenths of a percent to uh, 2767. The uh, NASDAQ 100, as you can see, is still... Uh, holding above its 10-day moving average, its 20-day uh, moving average, which is another support level, right around 27, 22, and its 50-day moving average all the way down around uh, 26, uh, 20 uh, thereabouts. Uh, there has been some distribution in the NASDAQ 100 in, uh, in recent weeks. It hasn't been uh, extreme, but... Um, really similar to what we've seen in the major uh, averages. It'll be interesting to see how we, uh, uh, how we close today because, uh, again, volume does uh, what was tracking quite a bit lower than Monday. Now it's tracking uh, pretty close, and if, uh, if it continues, uh, we could see yet another higher volume decline uh, for the S&P 500, NASDAQ composite, and, uh, and the major averages. Uh, but right now, uh, selling pretty subdued in the uh, NASDAQ 100. Let's uh, move over, take a look at the S&P 500, see where that is at with about 50 minutes left to go in Tuesday's session. The bogey is uh, down nine points, six-tenths of a percent to 14.04. You see it's 20-day moving average at uh, 13.97. It's about seven points uh, below where it's uh, currently trading, and it's 50-day moving average at 1367 thereabouts. So these are support levels uh, for the S&P 500. Uh, everybody's waiting for a, a pullback that's you know having a hard time uh, gaining, uh, gaining traction. And uh, really, at this point, I, I really think that uh, until we start to see meaningful signs of selling in, in Apple, I think there's just going to be a bid uh, underneath this, uh, this, this market. And uh, you know, if you start to see signs of selling in Apple, that's probably going to you know, spill over into the NASDAQ 100, of course, because Apple makes up uh, close to 20% of the NASDAQ 100 uh, at this point. But, um, you know, with Apple uh, still hanging in there pretty well uh, and sentiment so positive around that, that, that stock, it's probably better news for the, for the bulls than, uh, than for the bears at this point. Let's take a look at the composite, NASDAQ composite, and we'll see that... It is, uh, you know, down 11 points, uh, four tenths of a percent. So uh, it hit an intraday low of 30.97, uh, currently trading around 31.08. So uh, muted, uh, muted selling pressure there as well. Uh, let's take a call. Uh, go over to the East Coast, specifically Boston. Joe from Boston wants to talk about the uh, the Spider S&P 500 uh, ETF. How are you doing today, Joe? Good, Ken. How are you? Pretty good. No complaints. Uh, 80, 80 degrees in uh, Los Angeles today, so a beautiful, beautiful day. I'm sure you're revved up for the Masters as I am. 
Oh, without a doubt, without a doubt. Um, <laughs> I mean, who knows? Uh, if you, you got your favorites, definitely. But uh, boy, there are so many people that have a chance to uh, to win this tournament. It's uh, it's going to be great. Going to be great. There's always you know one or two people that emerge early that are like you know out of nowhere. Yeah, for sure, no. for sure. So no. should be should be good. Hey, I was want to question. This is more of like an IBD question. So I've been you know following IBD for a long time, and my question to you is, uh, you know, now we're, we're we're in an uptrend under pressure. On right. IBD, um, have you ever seen IBD go to marketing correction with like the major averages still holding their like nine and ten day moving average? Uh, off the top of my head, yeah, I mean, off the top of my head, I, I can't say for sure, but I would have to say it would be it would be you know pretty rare if it if it has happened at all. So I would, Cause, cause, yeah, okay. So, I'll go ahead. No, so because because you're really the, they're still holding those averages yet. You know, I know the distribution days are racking up. So for the individual investor, you want to stay, you know, in if you can, and try to, you know, as you said, you know, you look at the individual action. But I just wanted to see your yeah. experience at IBD. Are they using? You know, I'm sure they're using some of those moving averages and distribution days in their formula. Yeah, no, absolutely, and uh, you know what, what Joe's talking about, uh, folks, is when uh, when you read IBD's the big picture column, it's sort of their daily market analysis uh, uh, column. They've got a little box where they keep track of higher volume declines in the indexes. So we're you know three and a half months into a, a market rally that started in uh, in mid to late uh, December, and what we see right now is that higher volume declines have been most pronounced in the NYSE composite headed into today. We had seven of them. Uh, we had five in the S&P 500 and four for the NASDAQ. And frankly, you know, we could see another one taking shape uh, today. It's still too early to say, but it's not out of the question. So, right, you know, right. so you've got, you've got this, uh, you've got what, what I would, what I would call mild signs of distribution in the market, uh, you know, but the fact that you look at daily charts for the S&P 500, look at a daily chart for the NASDAQ 100, the NASDAQ composite, and, you know, they're still acting strong. They're still holding near highs. They're still holding above near-term support levels. Not to mention the fact that your, you know, your NASDAQ 100 leaders like Apple, Intuitive Surgical, Priceline, right. I mean, uh, it's just there's just no technical damage uh, anywhere. So, you right. know, the bottom line right now, Joe, is that, the, the, the distribution in the market is definitely worth paying attention to, especially after the run the market has made. But if you're if you're in the right stocks, and you know, for my ultimate growth stocks model portfolio, I, I started buying in early January, right. mid late January. You know, I've got some cushions in a lot of stocks where I can afford to sit through a little bit of selling. Now I'm going to just watch them, and if they start to to violate uh, near term support levels, and I start to see volume uh, pick up in some of these leaders, then you know I'll, I'll start taking partial profits or maybe full. Right profits in, in right. some uh, instances so that's kind of where where i'm at right now yeah hey can i ask you so. a question about one another company i don't know if you've ever followed it before um cksw do you know much about this company uh cks w cksw you know anything about uh, this company? Quick Software Technologies. I don't, and let me just let me just pull it up in uh, in Tiger TV here. C K uh, at C K S W. You know, I've heard of it. I've heard of it, and um, you know, it's uh, uh, it definitely technically is a very very strong stock. I, I love the uh, the uh, enterprise software makers as uh, as a whole. Uh, yeah, right. I own one. I own one in my Ultimate Growth Stocks model portfolio that I think has great potential. I think it's an industry group that's going to continue to see consolidation. Very fragmented. Group. Group. But uh, you know, as you know, Click Software Technologies garners uh, real high ratings from uh, from IBD. Good top line, bottom line growth. Um, right. You know, te technically strong. I, I I'd have to do. Uh, I know they're based in Israel. Um, right. Strong strong price performer for sure. Yeah, it's good. it's only about four hundred million market cap. So I didn't know if this, but it's got decent volume. So I didn't know if this was a little bit too small for you or. Well, you know, I I, I typically I'm not going to look that. Closely, I mean, usually one billion is my is my cutoff. It doesn't mean that I won't look underneath one one billion, but uh, certainly right. in a company like this, I mean, you you just look at all of its fundamental metrics. It's uh, right. strong across all fronts. So I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna look at a at a at a small cap stock with a market cap here around four hundred million, um, there's a lot to like about it at at uh, at first uh, at first glance. Okay, thanks, Ken. All right, Joe. Take care. Have a good one. You too. Bye. Right, bye. 
All right, that's Joe from uh, Boston. Yeah, Click Software Technologies, based in uh, uh, Israel. Very low uh, short interest in this stock. Market cap of uh, 400 million. Uh, you know, sales growth, and uh, they did 24 million in the uh, fourth quarter, 24 million in revenues, up 30% from a year ago. Earnings up 114% to 15 cents a share. Return on equity, 30%, um, very high. It's got some mutual fund sponsorship, not a lot, but, you know, I like these companies that are still in the early stages of being discovered by fund managers. I talk about that a lot. If I have a choice between owning a stock that um, that is owned by, you know, 100 or 200 funds as opposed to one that's uh, that's owned by 900 or 1,000 uh, with all things equal, I'll generally go with the one that is uh, that has less mutual fund sponsorship uh, because there's still a lot more room for more funds to come in and, and buy the stock. So Click Software Technologies, uh, at the end of the first quarter last year, 33 funds had a position. Uh, at the end of uh, the fourth quarter, uh, that number had increased to, to 51. So uh, at first glance, there's a lot of uh, interesting uh, a lot of positive qualities at Click Software Technologies. All right, so um, yeah, and uh, as Joe as Joe pointed out, as an individual investor right now, uh, there's no reason to have your foot on the accelerator here. Uh, there are a lot of people that are underinvested out there, including hedge funds and mutual fund managers. There are some individual investors that probably missed out on this rally and are just now or in recent weeks have been thinking about putting money to work. It's a very difficult environment right now, uh, April 3rd, to, to put new money to work. And I've been talking about this on the show that you know, after three and a half months, you've got growth stocks that have just been going gangbusters, you know, that are up 20, 30 percent. Um, you know, a name like Apple, a name like Priceline, a name like Intuitive Surgical, real high quality institutional quality growth stocks that have just been running higher forever and are extended in price. Bottom line, they're extended and you don't want to, you don't want to chase them up at, um, up at uh, current levels. So, you know, if you have new money to put to work, um, I'd be very, very careful here. You know, because the the market is going to come. The market is going to come back at some point, and I suspect that some of your big leaders are ultimately going to find support at a moving average, like the 50-day moving average on a daily chart, or if you're looking at a weekly chart, the the 10-week moving average. They mostly will correspond to to the similar price. Um, but you know, until that happens, until you see the pullback that uh, inevitably is going to happen at some point, I would avoid uh, chasing uh, performance at, uh, at this stage of, uh, of the game. So uh, yesterday on the New York Stock Exchange, we had 758 million shares trade hands. Uh, right now, uh, it lo it's looking to be coming, coming in pretty close to that level, but um, you know, there's still about um, 40 minutes left to go in the session, so we'll see if the uh, NYSE uh, indices, you know, end up, uh, you know, flashing an another higher volume decline today. Uh, Nasdaq volume yesterday, 1.7 million shares, again, coming, tracking pretty close to that level uh, right now. All right, folks, uh, when we come back, we'll check on uh, crude oil, gold, talk about Molson Coors Brewing acquisition, earnings reports, economic data, a lot of good stuff coming up. You're listening to Breakout Investing on TFNN. We'll be right back. Here's what people are saying about Tiger TV. Let's go to John in Tampa. Hey, John, what's going on? Hi, Tom. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. You having a good day out there? A wonderful day. I love your Tiger TV. I watch it every day. I'm like a kid in a candy store. Oh, man, I appreciate you out there watching it. How long have you been watching the Tiger TV? I watch it almost a month now, and it's just it's wonderful. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Oh, yes, it's cool. You see the charts and everything. Thanks so much for the hard work. Tiger TV, a great news service from TFNN.com. TFNN is proud to bring you the cutting edge of investment newsletters. Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Ken is a top-down investor who lets price and volume in the major stock indices tell him when to be in the market and when to be out. By using his unique blend of fundamental and technical analysis, Ken will protect your hard-earned capital while realizing breakout gains. Go to TFNN.com today, click Investment Newsletters, and get Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks free for two weeks. 
you take a hands-on approach to managing your investments. And whether you're bullish or bearish on U.S. Treasuries, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you seek to maximize your returns. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors, employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Masters with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN.com, author of Mastering Probabilities, a daily investment and trading newsletter, and teacher of The Money Game. Studies show that three out of five people are afraid for their life in trading these markets, and the number one reason given is fear of loss. Look, Fear stands for false evidence appearing real, and the money game proves it. Lesson number one, don't risk more than 1% of your trading capital on any trade. Why, you ask? Because 35 trades in a row where you risk 50 cents and make a dollar are all you need to double your trading capital versus the 230 losing trades in a row you would need to bring your balance to $100. Let me teach you more about the money game risk-free for 30 days. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, for your 30-day risk-free trial. You were born to be a money master, and I'll teach you how. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. This segment is brought to you by Goldfields. For more information, just click the Goldfields banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, quick check on the markets. Uh, Dow uh, down 90 and a half points, uh, 7 tenths of a percent to 13,173. NASDAQ uh, down 14 points, half a percent to 3,105. And the S&P 500 down uh, 9 points or so, 7 tenths of a percent to 1409. Uh, yeah, the Fed minutes uh, came out uh, earlier today, and uh, general takeaway was that, um, well, there appears to be less interest in another round of asset uh, purchases known as quantitative easing. This is interesting because Remember, it was a week ago yesterday where Ben Bernanke in a speech talked about, you know, stubbornly high unemployment and how he's very cautious on the economy and that the Fed needs to stand ready uh, to help the economy along uh, if, it, if it needs to. And that fueled a big rally on Wall Street because investors took that to mean that, hey, you know, quantitative easing is still on the, the, the table. That's going to weaken the dollar. That's going to, you know, put money out of uh, bonds and into stocks. And, you know, everything's, uh, everything's good. But um, so the minutes come out. Uh, you know, apparently, uh, you know, the, there's uh, less interest now in another round of uh, asset purchases by the uh, by the Fed, and uh, stocks are, you know, just selling off a little bit on that news. But uh, again, losses look uh, look pretty contained uh, at uh, at this point. Uh, yes, there's mild uh, distribution in this market, but uh, as we've been saying all along, the um, uh, the action in leading stocks continues to look, uh, you know, pretty. Uh, pretty darn good. I think if uh, you know, when the market eventually pulls back, it's um, uh, it's probably going to be relatively uh, short-lived. I still think there's money that wants uh, uh, into this uh, market, and we'll, um, 
we'll see. I'm probably playing more defense than uh, offense with my Ultimate Growth Stocks uh, model portfolio. Uh, that's a, a newsletter that I write at TFNN. I update the uh, letter every Tuesday, so the latest update went out uh, earlier today. If you want to uh, try 30 days free, one month free of Ultimate Growth Stocks, you can do that right on the homepage of TFNN.com. Just click on the Newsletters tab and then Investment Newsletters. You can get more information there. Or you can go to KenShreve.com, and that takes you over to my uh, information page at uh, TFNN.com where my bio is and you know a link to uh, listen to uh, the show and more information about the newsletter there as well. Uh, taking a look at uh, crude oil today, down 1.2% to 104.01 a barrel. Uh, also gold. Gold was interesting. Gold for a June delivery, and I'll go ahead and pull up a chart of uh, the GLD here, Spider Gold Trust. But uh, gold for June delivery lost seven dollars and seventy cents uh, to sixteen seventy two an ounce uh, during the regular session. But after the Fed minutes came out, this was after gold had closed. Gold uh, traded all the way down to sixteen uh, forty four. So almost uh, what thirty. 28, 30 bucks lower than where it closed at 16.72. So we'll see where gold uh, opens uh, tomorrow. Uh, merger news today, Molson Coors uh, Brewing. Well, actually, before we go to that, let's uh, just take a look at the GLD here. You'll see uh, with about a half hour left to go on Monday session, the GLD is uh, down $3.39, a little over 2% to 159 Fifty-five. You see that uh, GLD, uh, you know, tried uh, tried to rally uh, last week or in recent days, and um, now it's uh, more volume, more selling in the in the fund uh, today. So gold uh, looks to be uh, very uh, weak here. Uh, merger news uh, earlier today: Molson Coors Brewing. That's ticker TAP. TAP on the uh, New York Stock Exchange. Uh, they're going into Eastern Europe. Uh, call it an emerging market with its acquisition of Czech Republic-based Starbev for $3.54 billion. Uh, Molson Coors has a big presence in the U.S., Canada, and uh, Japan, but um, it wants to get into Eastern Europe uh, with this acquisition. Shares of Molson Coors Brewing uh, down 5% on the news today to 4339. So that's it uh, basically on the acquisition front. So I'll take a look at um, a retailer here, ticker CONN. It's a um, company called Cons. CONN on the Nasdaq. Small company, market cap of 613 million, but uh, quite a nice earnings report uh, from the company. Doesn't doesn't show the growth uh, that I typically target uh, for my ultimate growth stocks uh, model portfolio. Uh, sales up only 4% in the quarter to 226.7 million. This was fourth quarter results that the company reported uh, earlier. Uh, today, uh, they also raised their full year earnings guidance, and that has uh, fueled a 14.4% move in the stock today, up $2.37 to 1886. Um, Cons is a specialty retailer of home appliances, consumer electronics, home office equipment, lawn and garden products, mattresses, furniture, all kinds of good stuff. But uh, investors clearly liked what Cons had to say, and uh, stock is benefiting uh, uh, today up 14%, big gap up in price. In in huge volume. All right, folks, uh, coming up next, we'll uh, take a look at economic data on tap this week and a lot of movers uh, happening today. We'll be right back. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and Dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. 
you've heard Tom O'Brien on the air and you've always thought about trying out his newsletter, Market Insights. Well, now is the perfect time. For a limited time only, when you sign up for a two-week free trial to Market Insights, we'll send you a free copy of Tom O'Brien's best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. If you decide to cancel within the two-week trial period, pay absolutely nothing and keep Tom's book as a free gift from us. Tom sends out his daily newsletter each morning by 9.30 a.m. with trade recommendations including price targets and price stops. As recently as March 21st, Market Insight subscribers closed out a position for more than a 25% profit in just over two weeks. To get your two-week free trial to Market Insights, along with your free copy of The Art of Timing the Trade, your ultimate trading mastery system, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Supplies are limited for this one-of-a-kind special, so act today and don't let this opportunity pass you by. Offer only valid for new subscribers. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan for Morgan Stanley Smith Barney. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportion of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley Smith Barney believes that a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what asset allocation location and the Morgan Stanley Smith Barney financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and certified financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Smith Barney, LLC, member SIPC. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by Direction Shares. To learn more about tactical tools for the sophisticated active investor, hit the Direction Shares banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks, to Breakout Investing on TFNN. Uh, there are numerous market catalysts uh, coming up. Don't forget, uh, this Friday, we've got the uh, employment report for... Uh, for March, uh, non-farm payrolls are expected to be up about 200,000 after uh, 227,000 gain in uh, February. Unemployment rate probably going to stay where it is, right at 8.3%, so we'll see what that uh, data show us uh, later in the week. And then don't forget, uh, companies just closed their books on the first quarter. Uh, quarter ended March uh, 31st, and uh, we're going to see a whole bunch of earnings reports uh, coming in, starting with uh, Alcoa. That's going to be right in the middle of the month uh, sometime, and then and a whole bunch of uh, earnings reports the third, uh, fourth week of uh, April. So uh, let's see. Let's see what the first quarter uh, numbers uh, look like. But um, you know, and you know, right now, what we know is that listen, there's distribution in the market. Nasdaq right now is on pace for its uh, fifth decline in the past uh, six trading sessions. Here's a look at the uh, composite on Tiger TV, down uh, near its session low now, uh, down close to 16 points, half a percent to 3103. Um, you know, totally reasonable to think that at some point the NASDAQ composite is going to pay a visit to its 50-day moving average, which uh, right now is at 29.69. Uh, um, you know, and again, you're probably looking at a pullback of, what, 4, 5, 6% from its current price uh, to, to get down there. But, you know, considering the run that it has made, um, you know, perfectly reasonable to, to think that... Um, 
it could you know, eventually pay a visit to its 50-day moving average. Uh, jobs report on Friday. Uh, tomorrow we've got the ADP employment change for March. Uh, Thursday, challenger job cuts and weekly jobless claims. Um, and that, that's it for economic data for the, um, uh, for the rest of the uh, week. Let's take a look at some high quality growth stocks that are uh, moving today. Wanted to check in on Michael Kors. This is a, a recent new issue in the market that continues to look pretty pretty good here. The stock is outperforming today, up 68 cents, 1.5% to 46.83. Uh, I'm really watching this one uh, closely. This is a stock that has a lot of characteristics I, I like to see. It's a new issue, uh, good bottom line and top line growth. Um, you know, it's just a lot to like about Michael uh, Michael Kors, and it continues to hold near highs, and it is basing uh, nicely. So I'd like to see this one prove itself a little more. It's 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 acting perfectly fine right now. I'd like to see a base uh, form here. I'm going to be watching for volume to roll into this name. Um, again, and uh, maybe we'll see uh, eventually a breakout over uh, 5069, uh, which was its high set uh, back here in, in March. So uh, this is a stock that, uh, that still has a you know, combination of fundamental and technical strength, um, definitely a, a name that I'm watching here. Let's take a look at uh, GNC Holdings. This is a stock that is um, also outperforming uh, nicely uh, today, the stock got an upgrade earlier today from BMO Capital to outperform from uh, Market uh, Perform. It's a, uh, a retailer of uh, health uh, fitness products, um, but GNC uh, doing well. This is a current holding in my Ultimate Growth Stocks uh, model uh, portfolio. Stock is up a dollar nine, three point one percent to thirty five. 99. And I actually added to my position in GNC Holdings when the stock gapped up on this day right here. This is when they actually raised their first quarter earnings guidance. They came out and said that, hey, business is tracking better than we thought. And uh, I added to the position here. So it's uh, in terms of weighting in the model portfolio, it is one of the top weighted uh, stocks. So GNC Holdings uh, acting uh, very well today. Let's check in on Family Dollar Stores, uh, FDO. I think it was Friday last week. This company really issued bullish earnings. Dollar Stores have been doing well uh, for quite some time. Uh, you've got um, uh, Dollar Tree and, and Dollar General also in the group, but Family Dollar Stores uh, issued bullish earnings uh, last week, and the CEO said that sales growth was, should continue to accelerate um, in the in the current year. So very bullish about business prospects at Family Dollar Stores. Uh, the stock right now is up 74 cents, 1.2% to 63.56, and let's take a look at a weekly chart for Family Dollar family dollar stores. I got so many charts saved in here. There it is. And this is just a good example. Um, you know, buying technical breakouts is at the crux of, of how, you know, I go, I go about uh, buying stocks for my ultimate uh, growth stocks model portfolio. And here with Family Dollar, you see a, a, a nice uh, base uh, that, that formed here, and then just a, a heavy volume breakout uh, last week over $60.50 uh, thereabout. So this is, uh, this is a good one to watch. I am not long the stock uh, at this point, but um, very bullish technical breakout last week. And uh, it's actually my favorite name in the group. I think that uh, Dollar General and uh, Dollar Tree, you know, they've, they've made massive price runs already, uh, Family Dollar Stores is just a good, fresh, heavy volume technical breakout. And, um, you know, listening to the conference call on Friday, they uh, seem to be firing on all uh, cylinders uh, right now. Let's take a look at uh, NCR. NCR Corporation. This is a, a company uh, that um, you know also looks interesting here from a technical perspective. The company makes uh, ATMs, automated teller machines, ATMs. They also do self-serve, uh, self-serve kiosks for a variety of different uh, uh, industries and uh, you know retail and. Uh, gaming, entertainment, uh, things like that, but shares of uh, NCR right now only down a penny to 2170. Watching this name for a possible move over 2212. That's going to be its high uh, set back here in uh, in February, but you know, sales growth accelerating at uh, NCR, high return on equity has a lot of uh, positive qualities in terms of its uh, balance sheet. 
uh, is not a company that's growing 40, 50 percent. That is uh, also typical of a, of a stock, the type of growth stock that I target for ultimate growth stocks. I like to see good, strong growth, but sometimes, you know, slow, steady growth is okay too. And you have it at uh, NCR. So, um, you know, pretty, uh, pretty good uh, setup here. Let's also check in on shares of uh, Buckle. BKE on the New York Stock Exchange. The stock is also outperforming. You know, considering that the market is trading near uh, session lows right now, when I look through my growth screens, you still see a lot of green out there. A lot of stocks still flexing their muscle, and that's uh, important. Uh, Buckle is a specialty retailer, uh, high quality name. It is up uh, 80 cents today, 1.65% uh, to 49.35. Uh, you know, can't rule out a breakout here. Over 50 bucks uh, a share. Uh, they are a retailer that specializes. They they they're known for their jeans, but they cater to young uh, young men, young women. Um, five straight quarters of uh, double digit earnings and, and sales growth, and. Um, you know, just uh, a stock, uh, another stock out there with strong fundamentals and uh, technicals. Let's take a look at a weekly chart uh, for uh, Buckle here, and you'll see it has been uh, consolidating gains for a little over three weeks, but uh, there's your swing point of uh, $50. And I just really like the fact that it just it just you know, made, a, made a big move uh, right in this area here, actually broke out over some resistance at uh, 45, and now it's just kind of biding. I'm trading tightly, moving sideways, and uh, stock is outperforming again. And, you know, one of several stocks that is showing signs of accumulation out there. So in specialty retailer, BKE is um, uh, a name to uh, keep an eye on. Uh, car sales today, interesting. A um, lot of uh, ancillary movement. Uh, you had Chrysler, Ford, uh, GM all report uh, pretty nice uh, sales for the month of uh, March. At Chrysler, uh, they're controlled by uh, Fiat in Italy, but Chrysler sales increased 34% in uh, March. They sold uh, 163,381 cars and trucks, uh, the best performance in uh, four years for that company. Uh, sales at Ford, pretty good, up 5% in March. Uh, just over 223,000 uh, uh, vehicles uh, sold. Car sales up 8%. Uh, sales of the Ford Focus uh, continue to do very well. Uh, that was up 78%. Sales of the Ford Focus up 78% to 28,293 vehicles. Uh, utility vehicle sales up 6%. Truck sales up uh, 11%. And uh, good numbers at GM uh, as well. Vehicle sales jumped 12% in March. Let's uh, take a look at shares of Ford. And you see Ford actually hit an intraday high today of $12.95. It is uh, trading near its session low now, down $0.04 cents to 12.58. And shares of GM, we'll see how uh, GM is doing. Uh, also, uh, very similar chart. Lots of selling pressure in both Ford and GM, despite uh, pretty decent sales numbers. Uh, shares of GM now down 4.8% uh, to 2547, also near its um, session low. Uh, at one point, a lot of um, you know, a lot of businesses benefiting from some of these uh, strong car sales data. Let's check in on uh, shares of AutoZone here. AZO on the New York Stock Exchange uh, up three dollars and eighteen cents, eight tenths of a percent to three hundred and eighty-one dollars and ninety cents a share. It's an auto parts uh, retailer. See, the stock did gap up in price today, but it is all the way down near its uh, session low right now at uh, again three eighty-one ninety. Its uh, intraday low is three eighty-one eighty-five. So uh, AZO. Uh, down or at its uh, at its session low after early strength, and then um, car dealerships uh, also doing well today. Buckingham Research uh, upgraded three names to uh, buy ratings from uh, neutral. Let's check in on uh, Group One Automotive (GPI) on the New York Stock Exchange. Group One Automotive uh, having a good day. No sellers in this stock today. Up a dollar seventy-five, three point one percent to fifty-eight sixty-nine. Buckingham Research also upgraded. Penske Automotive Group, that's P-A-G. We'll see how that stock is uh, faring today. Penske, Penske Automotive Group uh, also having a good day up near its session high. 
A nice little heavy volume breakout today. Penske up 4.2% to 2574. And the final stock upgraded by Buckingham Research uh, Car Dealership, Asbury Automotive Group, ABG. Another stock with uh, you know, positive qualities here. ABG, Asbury Automotive Group. Group. It is um, up 4.5% to 2853. So uh, car dealerships um, doing well uh, today as well. Um, yeah, I mentioned a lot of these growth stocks that. Um, uh, you know, that I, I want to buy. I mean, this, on the one hand, this is kind of a frustrating market, not because I'm sitting on the sidelines in cash, but because I have, like, positions in my ultimate growth stocks model portfolio that I'd like to fill out at some point. And the problem with doing that right now is that the market is just not giving me an opportunity to fill out the positions. There were many names that I bought in January and February that, are, that continue to work nicely, but they're, you know, just they're extended now past proper buy points. I'm waiting uh, for the market to pull back back to, to see. I'll have you know some names that most likely are going to find support at either the 20-day moving average or the 50-day moving average. But until that happens, I don't feel comfortable adding to a position and chasing a stock. Uh, not only is that going to raise my average cost basis, but you know I don't like to buy stocks when they're too uh, too extended in in price. Uh, plus, there are some other there are some growth names I would just like to to own at at, at some point. I'd like to you know be able to get back into to Apple. I don't think we've looked at Apple today, but let's take a look at shares of um, of Apple. And you can see just just no no sellers around this stock uh, at all. It is up uh, nine dollars and sixty six cents today, up another one and a half percent to. Six twenty-eight twenty-nine. Uh, now the story with Apple is that listen, is there a lot of euphoria around the stock? Absolutely. I mean, there isn't a day that that goes by when uh, an analyst is not raising a, a price target for uh, Apple. And today, over at Piper Jaffray, it was Gene Munster, a uh, you know a popular. Uh, widely followed uh, analyst. He said that Apple, you know, could hit a thousand dollars a share in, in 2014. And you know, again, price targets are going up left and right, and, and perhaps rightly so. I mean, I, you know, people are finally coming around to the fact that you know Apple is uh, is an innovator. And you know, what's amazing is that you know after its breakout in January, over 425, 430 dollars a share, and the fact that it's trading around 628 bucks right now, it's still only selling at uh, at 18 times uh, trailing earnings and 12 and a half times forward earnings, and so you know there's just a lot of uh, fund managers and hedge funds that still don't own Apple, and they're you know probably still getting a, a pretty good deal. Um, but again, the key rule that I follow is not to buy extended stocks, and Apple is uh, very extended right now. So if it continues higher, it's going to have to it's going to have to go up. Um, it's going to have to go up without me and. You know, when the market does pull back, uh, it's going to bring uh, Apple more than likely down with it. And at this point, boy, Apple's 50-day moving average is all the way down around 531 bucks uh, a share, about 100 points uh, below where it's uh, currently trading now. It would probably take a pretty sizable pullback, um, you know, relatively speaking, for the Nasdaq for Apple to come all the way down to its 50-day uh, moving average. But you know, it's not out of the question. But I would expect that that would be a, uh, a pretty strong support level for Apple. Uh, heck, even the 20-day moving average right now around 590, um, you know, which is uh, you know, 30, 40 points uh, below where Apple's uh, currently trading right now. So, um, you know, I mentioned other other NASDAQ 100 names like Intuitive Surgical. I don't own shares uh, here. I took profits a while back in uh, Intuitive Surgical. But, again, this is another another name that I'd like to own at some point, but I can't buy it up here because it's been running higher, hasn't really consolidated much. The 20-day line for Intuitive Surgical is at 533. Stock is around 548 right now. 50-day moving average for ISRG down around 509. So could pay a visit there. If it finds support, there's an entry point. You're listening to Breakout Investing on TFNN. We'll be right back, folks.
In the world of financial markets, there's a new player in town with an exciting new way to trade the markets. Nadex now offers binary options as well as bull spreads in a wide range of indices along with commodity and forex markets. With as little as $100, you can gain access to a new way to trade global financial markets while guaranteeing that your risk will always be capped. Nadex allows you to multiply your trading opportunities in ways never imagined before and access markets you once thought were out of reach. With short-term trading opportunities available, including binary options expiring each hour the market is open, Nadex allows you to take advantage of a variety of market conditions regardless of volatility or market direction. Now is the time to take advantage of this exciting new market. Don't let this trading opportunity pass you by. Open your account today by clicking on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Nadex, a better way to trade. TFNN is proud to bring you the cutting edge of investment newsletters. Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Ken is a top-down investor who lets price and volume in the major stock indices tell him when to be in the market and when to be out. By using his unique blend of fundamental and technical analysis, Ken will protect your hard-earned capital while realizing breakout gains. Go to TFNN.com today, click Investment Newsletters, and get Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks free for two weeks. Folks, turns out my best student became my best teacher. Steve Rhodes absolutely raised my standards, and I'll guarantee he'll raise yours. Thanks, Tom. What I've learned is that if you want more, you must become more, and that transformation, folks, that occurs the moment you decide to become a master. Now, the quickest way to mastery is through immersion, and for two solid days in Denver, Boston, and Tampa, I'll create a new standard of wealth for those few trader investors who have a burning desire to succeed. At my Master Trader course, I'll teach you how to create the ultimate money machine. These are the best-kept secrets in the business. Roadblocks, folks. Dabblers give up when they first appear. Stressors last just a little bit longer, but masters expect roadblocks and achieve extraordinary results when they bust right through them. I have all the benefit of knowing the type of wealth creation that I can generate for you. You don't. That's why I'm making this unconditional money-back guarantee. If for any reason you're not satisfied with my Master Trader course, I'll refund every penny. That's right. I take all the risk, and you get all the benefit. Go to the homepage at TFN.com and sign up today. Put the power of the Chapman Wave method methodology to work for you. No matter what market you trade, what time frame you trade in, or your trading style, the opening call, Basil Chapman's daily market newsletter, is bursting with the information and trades you need to become a more successful trader. I've been using Basil Chapman's Chapman Wave methodology for several years now. His Chapman Wave can be used for any time period for not only equities, but futures, currencies, commodities. I've been also a subscriber of his opening call, which I find an invaluable tool to help me analyze the potential of the market each day. He gives you opportunities to go short and long. It includes recommendations on stocks. I strongly recommend people using the Chapman Wave and very, very strongly support the use of his opening call. To find out more about Basil Chapman and his Chapman Wave methodology, and to get your two-week free trial of the opening call, a $64 value, visit TFNN.com today. Here's what people are saying about Tiger TV. Let's go to John in Tampa. Hey, John, what's going on? Hi, Tom. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. You having a good day out there? A wonderful day. I love your the Tiger TV. I watch it every day. I'm like a kid in a candy store. Oh, man, I appreciate you out there watching it. How long have you been watching the Tiger TV? I watch it almost a month now, and it's just it's wonderful. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's cool. You see the charts and everything. Thanks so much for the hard work. Tiger TV, a great news service from TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, founder and CEO of TFNN, professional trader and educator. Also a special guest on CNBC, analyzing the commodity markets. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. As we head into the close here, five minutes left to go in Tuesday's session. Um, boy market uh, acting resilient again. Index is trying to move off their lows. The Dow uh, now down 70 points, uh, five, uh, half a percent to 13.194. NASDAQ composite impressive, now down less than seven points, um, well, close to seven points, I should say, only two-tenths of a percent to 31.12. And the S&P 500 down just over six points, uh, call it half a percent to 14.12. Uh, uh, check in on some other high-quality growth names here. 
Let's take a look at uh, F5 uh, Networks. Uh, right now is uh, trading up 1% to 138.02. Uh, definitely a networking uh, leader. F5's 50-day uh, line is down at 127.48, so about 9 or 10 points. Um, Actually, I should say one uh, about 10, 10, 11 points from where it's uh, currently trading. But again, when selling pressure starts to build in the Nasdaq, I suspect a lot of these uh, big leaders, like a like an F5 Networks, are gonna are gonna come down to that support level. Now, some are gonna find support, others. Um, May not, but F5 is uh, high quality enough where uh, I would expect that to, to find support. MasterCard, another uh, strong performer here. Shares of MasterCard up 1.7% today to 439.56. Another another name that I'd like to own at uh, at some point, but uh, you know I don't want to. Um, uh, I don't want to. Don't want to chase it up here. So uh, hopefully the market will uh, give me an opportunity to uh, pick up Mastercard on a on a pullback. And how about Priceline.com? I mean, this stock is is making and has made like an Apple like move in in recent weeks. Shares of Priceline up another twenty two dollars today, three point one percent to seven forty two nineteen. By far, it's been the the biggest winner in my Ultimate Growth Stocks model portfolio. Uh, no reason to sell this name. I've got a, a big enough cushion. Uh, Priceline tr trending well above its 50-day moving average. Uh, right now, again, trading at $742 a share. Its 50-day uh, is down at uh, 618 619 something like that. So, um, you know, more than um, 100 and 30 points uh, to go for it to get all the way down to uh, to, to 618. But um, Priceline, another uh, very strong performer. Um, coming up after the close, uh, taking a look at a couple of our earnings reports here. Let's take a look at MIND. At last check, the stock was uh, having a very solid day. And uh, it's still doing well, up close to 4% to $24.40. Uh, Mitchum Industries is a small company, market cap of only $300 million, but very compelling growth story here. Um, they lease and sell seismic equipment to the oil and gas industry. Earnings are expected to be up 235% from a year ago to $0.57 cents a share. Sales up 57% to $31.1 million. So a uh, very small company, but a fast-growing company, so it's, uh, it's compelling. We'll see what Mitchum Industries has to say after the close. And uh, also, let's take a look at TEAM, T-I-S-I. -I. Let's pull that up here. T-I-S-I, -I, TEAM Incorporated. And um, stock had a big day yesterday, big percentage gain yesterday. It's under a little bit of pressure today, down 54 cents, 1.6% to 32.77, ahead of its earnings report. This company provides a uh, variety of services for high-temperature, high-pressure piping systems used in the uh, refining, petrochemical, and power industries. Uh, quarterly profit here is seen rising 125% from a year ago to 18 cents a share, with sales up 17% to 127.5 million. Coming up uh, tomorrow before the open, we'll listen to what Monsanto has to say. That's um, MON on the New York Stock Exchange. Shares of uh, Monsanto up 27 cents to 81.75 ahead of its earnings report tomorrow before the open. After the close tomorrow, two high-quality retailers, Bed Bath & Beyond, BBBY, and Price Smart, which is basically the Costco of Latin America. Coming up next, uh, the Tom O'Brien Show, 4 to 6 Eastern on TFNN. I'll see you back here on Thursday for another edition of Breakout Investing.